All right, welcome back. Chapter 13, we're going to finish up with the last three questions here. And the idea here is, and I've talked about a little bit in the lecture, is this notion of economic profit versus accounting profit. Now, this simply isn't a struggle between two disciplines fighting over vocabulary. They actually are two very important and different concepts. For an economist, economic profit means you're making a return that is above what you can do in your next best opportunity. In other words, it's generally above market average. For an accountant, profit simply means the difference between money revenue and cost. Revenue take in, cost you shell out. If that is positive, then you're in the black and you've made money. Right? For an economist, however, we like to make behavioral kinds of predictions. And which, as you'll see when you get this example, someone could be making, quote, a profit in the accounting sense, but losing money in the economic sense, making below economic returns, and that would change their behavior. The accountant's, the accountant's not really worried about the behavioral aspect per se, because their idea is basically they have to figure out how much you made above cost for tax purposes, etc., etc. The economist has a different objective. So both are correct, but both have different objectives, and that's why they use them in different ways. So let's start here. It says, Ellie's been working for an engineering firm and earning an annual salary of $80,000. She decides to open her own engineering business. Her annual expenses include $15,000 for rent, $3,000 for equipment, $1,000 for supplies, $1,200 for utilities, $35,000 salary for a secretary slash bookkeeper. Ellie will cover her startup expenses by cashing a $20,000 certificate of deposit on which she was earning annual interest of $500. Okay, question. And Ellie's annual accounting costs will equal. So what are her accounting costs? Well, the accounting costs are really money that she has to outlay, literally physically cash outlays. And so as we look at this list, this was the salary she was earning before. This is the interest she was making on her CD. This is the rent, equipment, supplies, utilities, secretaries. In terms of cash outlays, this, 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 and this are only things that the accountant would worry about. All right? You shelled out $15,000 for rent, $3,000, $1,000, $1,100 for various kinds of utilities and supplies, and you paid your secretary $35,000. If I add those up, I've got $50,000, I've got $55,200. So, the accountant would see Ellie's cost as $55,200. What would the economist see her cost as? The economist will get to it in a minute, but the economist says, look, you gave up an $80,000 salary. You gave up $500 in interest. If you had just kept your money in the CD, you'd make 500 bucks, right? So you gave that up to basically cover this initial expense you're doing here. Think of it this way. If you hadn't sold your CD and you went to the bank and borrowed $20,000 for your startup expenses, you'd be paying interest on that loan. That interest could come to something like $500 a year. And if you did pay interest on a bank loan, that would be an explicit cost and the accountant would grab it. But since you sold your own CD, you're not paying anybody this interest, you simply forego this interest. The economist still says, look, you gave up 500 bucks you could have made by just having the money sit in the bank. So for an economist, this is gonna come in as additional cost. For the accountant, they're only worried about this. So the answer to number eight is 55,200, which is obviously answer A. But let me jump to number nine, because that's what I was just working towards, right? Ellie's annual economic costs will equal, I've got to put these in, all right? So I'm going to add another $80,500 to that. And now for the economist, total cost, total economic cost, are equal to $135,000. Seven hundred. Okay, that's the economic cost. So, is, are we, again, are we just playing games here? No. The reason I say this is because if after she Ellie clears her expenses, what if her revenues were only, let's say, one hundred and twenty thousand? So let's say she has one hundred twenty thousand dollars in total revenue. We know her accounting costs are fifty five thousand two zero zero. All right. If we do this subtraction here, all right, we've gonna, we're going to basically end up with 0, 0, 008, right? And then we're going to end up with 4, 
and we're going to end up with uh, 9 minus 5 is 4. We're going to end up with 11 minus 6. We're going to end up with $64,800. In other words, according to the accountant, Ellie made $64,000. According to the economist, she lost $16,200. Why? Because she was making $80,000 before she did this, plus $500 interest on her. So you take the $80,500, $80, you subtract this from it, which is what she's making now, and that difference is going to come out to be just under $16,000. In other words, she, we, we would predict as economists that she wouldn't stay doing this very long. She would end up going back to the big firm because she's giving up about $16,000 a year in her own business. Now the accountant says, Ellie, you did fine. You cleared $64,800. The economist says, no, Ellie didn't do fine because she's giving up an opportunity to make $80,000 plus $500 in interest. She's giving up an opportunity to make $80,000 and $500. $80,500. That, we say, will predict that she will go back. So for the economist, she's making below normal profits because she could make $80,000. She gave that up to make $64,000. This is an economic loss, as we perceive it, even though she, the accountant says you cleared this. Because the accountant says this is what you're going to pay taxes on to the government, and that's what's really important for the accountant, and that's why you hire the accountant. The economist says, no, I'm trying to predict whether many people will leave a big accounting firm and open up their own business, and if you, all you can make opening up your own business is 64000 then relatively few people are going to leave because they can make $80,000 in the big firm. Now, Clearly, I'm abstracting from some important variables. People like to be in their own, and she may value that, all right? And that may be a benefit to not working under somebody and wearing a suit and tie or whatever, getting dressed up every day, and being her own boss. That could be very valuable to her. But in purely this information alone, in salary alone, she is worse off by going into business by herself. So, last question. According to Ellie's accountant, which of the following revenue totals will yield her business profit her business $50,000 in profits. In other words, if these are her costs, question mark, minus 55,000 in cost has to equal $50,000 clear. That's the question they're asking you. So if she has revenue of, in this case, $105,200, minus her expenses, she'd end up with profits of $50,000. So the answer to number 10 is 105,200, which is B, okay? And that's, again, fairly mechanical once you set it up. But the point I want to make here, and I want to emphasize to these last three questions, was this notion of economic versus accounting profits and why we make the distinction. Again, economists are trying to predict behavior. Accountancy, accountants are trying to make sure you know what you have to owe the government in terms of taxes. All right. That really does it for chapter 13. We're going to move into some more exciting stuff, I think. This is somewhat mechanical. We're going to move into perfect competition, monopoly, oligopoly, and some very exciting aspects of market structure when we come back uh, next week. All right, see you then.